Where well, you bought your own. 3D, 3D, 19 rouge, 19 secondaire. Welcome to a special Saturday edition of Larry King Live. Tonight, as Desert Storm thunders on, the first Iraqi POWs are captured. Israel survives another attack, but how long will they hold their fire? Now, here's Larry King. Good evening, a special Saturday night edition of Larry King Live and a couple of program reminders. There will be a Sunday night edition of Larry King Live. Tomorrow evening, we'll be here hosting it. The Iraqi ambassador to the United Nations, Abdul Amir Al-Anbari, was to be our guest tonight. However, he was in touch with the leaders in Baghdad and was told that he had to wait for authorization before appearing on this program. He does not have authorization to appear and is not with us. With us is, in Saudi Arabia, Charles Jaco, in Jerusalem, Gary Stryker, at the Pentagon, Wolf Blitzer, and here at our studios in Washington, Gene Kirkpatrick, the former United States Ambassador to the United Nations. First, we'll start with our correspondence. It is early Sunday morning. What's going on in Saudi Arabia, Charles? Well, good morning, Larry. We're at a few minutes after 5 in the morning. It's relatively quiet. The newest news we have from here is good news for um, the U.S. forces. A couple of American uh, airmen from uh, F... 4G Wild Weasel, that's one of those old F-4 planes retrofitted with all kinds of high-tech equipment, had to bail out because of some kind of uh, non-hostile fire malfunction. They did eject. They have been rescued. Uh, as far as we know, the air war continues unabated around the clock. The last figure we had was 4,000 missions. It's probably up a good deal higher than that. And we have some reports of the first ground skirmishes between U.S. forces and Iraqi forces near the Kuwaiti border. We're not sure on which side. They were small patrol-level skirmishes, a few men on each side, some small arms fire and then they withdrew and that is the latest from here by the way we will be including your phone calls as we always do on larry king live you'll be able to talk to miss kirkpatrick or any of our correspondents 202-408-1666 we'll now go to jerusalem it's early sunday morning there gary Stryker is on hand patriot missiles are on hand too what's the mood there gary well the mood here is hopeful now hoping that uh, there will not be another attack of Iraqi missiles like there has been for the last two days, uh, two nights. Uh, it is now a few minutes after four o'clock in the morning here. There has been one false alarm earlier in the night, but uh, so far there is no, is no uh, indication that uh, Iraqi missiles are going to attack Jerusalem or Tel Aviv today. Thanks, Gary. Let's go to the Pentagon and uh, Wolf Blitzer. Wolf, uh, it's uh, 9 o'clock at night, Saturday night in the Pentagon. Wolf seems eternally at the Pentagon. I know there was a, a uh, briefing earlier today, right? Right, Larry. The uh, big headline out of that briefing from uh, Lieutenant General Tom Kelly of the Joint Chiefs of Staff was that the U.S. now believes it has achieved virtual air superiority. Kelly says the U.S. and allied planes can go any, virtually any place they want in Iraq and be able to dominate the skies. The other headline was uh, confirmation from Defense Secretary Dick Cheney that the U.S. is uh, not only sending advanced Patriot missiles from bases in Europe to Israel, but is for the first time in uh, U.S.-Israeli relations also sending American troops to man those Patriots to serve uh, in the defense of Israel. In the past, the Israelis have always said they want U.S. equipment but not U.S. troops. Now they're getting U.S. troops underscoring what is considered to be a very serious danger to Israel from these Scud missiles and uh, a signal to the Israelis clearly to be uh, restrained in their response. By the way, gentlemen, you can ask any questions of Ms. Kirkpatrick as well. We welcome to Larry King Live. Always great to have her, Jean Kirkpatrick, the former United States Ambassador to the United Nations. We'll start right off uh, following up on what Wolf said. What do you make of the Patriot missiles manned by Americans in Israel? Well, I make of it that the United States is doing everything it can to prevent another damaging attack on Tel Aviv or Jerusalem or Haifa or any place in Israel and that the Israelis in dire danger understand that the Americans can protect them better than they can now protect themselves. Does, in, is this also a, a good thing for Israel? Does, will we leave those, uh, those Patriot missiles there? In other words, will Israel benefit by being hit by Dud Scuds? No. 
No, they will not. No, no. I mean, I don't think so. Israel is going to benefit by being protected against scuds. That, that's important. But I think that... Uh, I don't think it's good for Israel to be in such danger from no, not Scott. Not good for the missiles, dangers, but yeah. it does give them Patriot missiles, which they it didn't them, have before. Right, gives them the advanced Patriot missiles. They had apparently one system, but they, it's not fully operational. And uh, they wanted Patriot missiles. The Israeli defense minister asked for them in September, wanted them very badly. Uh, and I, I'm sure they're glad to have them. I don't doubt that. But uh, I'm sure they'd also rather not be in such danger. Would you gather that, that this was... Uh one of President Bush's better moments, holding them off. Would you gather that? Well, I think President Bush did what he th thinks he had to. And because he was very concerned about holding together the coalition, he's also worried about a widening war through some kind of complications with Jordan over airspace. And uh, I think that, uh, I think he did what he thought he had to, and I think Israel's done what they thought they had to. And uh, they've, you know, the consequences have been, it's been a very difficult situation for Israel, no doubt about that, because they have been sitting ducks to attacks from Iraqi Scud missiles. Um, but I think that, that the president has offered them a, as many assurances as he could. You know, it's very important, though, for us to remember that while the United States has been focused very heavily on protecting us and others from the Soviet Union all these years, the Israelis have put all their attention on protecting themselves against uh, from Arab neighbors who were hostile, and and so I'm sure it's very hard for them to be restrained and indeed not respond now. Emotionally, is this hard for you, Jean, to not be in the action? No. Not at all. No. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to no. be at the UN tonight. No. Why not? It's very. It's easy for me, frankly. Uh, well, right now, there's, there's nothing much happening at the UN, for one thing. I mean, there's no reason anybody should be particularly eager to be at the UN tonight. But, uh, you know, Larry, the fact is that I'm a professor and, and an observer, really, from much more of my life than I've been an actor. There hasn't been anything I have been very eager to do in this very difficult problem, quite frankly. I think the President's handled it brilliantly. If I hadn't thought that other people were handling it so well, that I would have probably felt like I'd like to get in and see what I could do. Brilliant is a word you use. Brilliant is the word I use. Brilliant. We'll be right back with Charles Jaco in Saudi Arabia, Gary Stryker in Jerusalem, Wolf Blitzer at the Pentagon, Madam Jean Kirkpatrick here at our studios in Washington, and your phone calls. This is Larry King Live Special Edition. We're going to do another one tomorrow night. We'll be right back. wondrously versatile Range Rover. Perfect for the highway. Or getting to the bank. It can give Jaguars a run for their money. And it's ideal for driving up to your country home. playing in select cities starts January 25th at theaters near you. Ten years down the road, I'd like to be in business for myself. I already got my security force. That's right, partner. We got us a lifetime contract. Here's my part of the bargain. Alpo. More meat protein than 10 pounds of steak fortified with all the vitamins and minerals dogs need to eat well and be well, well into the future. Now, there's something you got to understand, Max. Security guard's supposed to be me, okay? This is the Discover card, and this is $100 million. That's the cashback bonus earned by card members. But if you don't use this, you don't get any of this. It pays to Discover. As the war in the Gulf continues, 
CNN is the network with the most complete coverage from the Middle East and around the world. Now, more than ever, stay with the world's news leader, CNN. Before we get to more specific questions on happenings and take your phone calls, this is a question for everybody. For uh, We'll start with, uh, with uh, Saudi Arabia and Charles Jaco. What is it like to be part of a a going-on war in which you're covering it live from its scene. Now, this has never really happened before. What is it like to be part of it? Well, it's, it's interesting, I think, uh, more than anything else, and that's kind of a catch-all phrase. Uh, you get so caught up in trying to do your job, get the facts, try to figure out who's lying, when they're lying, um, trying to watch the planes going overhead, and that's the noise behind us, uh, excuse me, a transport a large military transport of some sort taking off, which may be uh, noisy for a couple of minutes. That uh, you get so caught up in trying to do the job because events are breaking so fast, trying to figure out who's lying about what, who's telling the truth, uh, <laughs> gathering information, that sometimes you forget that uh, you're making history because you are covering it live. Gary, what's it like for you there? Well, here, Larry, it's, uh, it's very interesting. Today we've had uh, an interesting time with the um, uh, Israeli government censors who have um, uh, tried to straighten us out on what their rules are concerning what we can report uh, on these missiles that are coming into uh, to Tel Aviv. Does that anger what, uh, you, or do you understand it? Well, we understand it because it's a security problem. They're worried that by, by showing wide pictures of, um, of Tel Aviv, by showing where these missiles land, it makes it very easy for uh, the other side to spot where they're shooting and uh, making corrections here and there. We're actually uh, working with them to show them uh, where they can adjust their sights so they can hit the target the next time. So Wolf, we, we, we do have to change. Wolf, as a former print journalist and a man who spent a lot of time in, in Israel, First, what do you think of, of the broadcast end for something like this? And two, would you rather be there than where you are? Well, I think the broadcast end is uh, so much more powerful and so much more immediate. When you write for a newspaper or a magazine, you have to wait at least a day or sometimes a week and many times often longer until you see the product, the end product in print. And, and it takes uh, a while longer to get some feedback. Certainly the audience is much more restricted. This is so, uh, for, for a long-time print journalist myself, this is a totally incredible experience to be on the air all of the time almost, and then to get that kind of instant reaction to go out with a story, and then within a few moments to get phone calls from Pentagon officials telling me you're right, you're wrong, but to get that kind of instant uh, reaction is totally different. Now, would you like to be where Gary is? Well, sure, I've spent a lot of time in Israel, and uh, I think it would be a fascinating story. I think this is a fascinating story here at the Pentagon as well. But there's no doubt that uh, the story in Israel, the story in Saudi Arabia, cer certainly the story in Baghdad, all of those scenes are the source of a great story for a journalist. And when, when the uh, story gets going, the adrenaline gets going, and mm. all of us want to be there. You had to read today the names of, of uh, early names of deaths, did you not? But well, we've been doing that. Uh, the anchors, of course, are reading some of those names. It's, that's not a very pleasant part of this mm. business. Uh, what is it like, Gene, to be an observer of this? Here, here's a, a war live. Yeah. Well, that's right. It, in a way, the way that this war is being covered is changing the war itself. Because it makes it so much more immediate than any war has ever been. It's, you know, it's globalizing our consciousness, I think, in a way. It's, it is bringing the war home in a way that no war has ever been done. And what home. will be the after effect of that, do you think? I mean, there's, you're historians, and you're a great teacher, like to go right. to examples. There's no example of this, right? That's right. Nothing there's to something point to. absolutely new in history. We don't know what the effects will be, except that war is somehow going to become realer, more real for everyone. The constraints that countries operate under are going to be more real. As people now understand, you know, why Israel doesn't want to have pictures of the neighborhood in which the Scud missile lands, so do they also understand, in a funny kind of way, why Saddam Hussein wants journalists out of Iraq. They understand it in a new way. So we're going to understand it all, all of us are going to understand it in more depth than we ever did. And also it's a war in which the enemy might well be watching us now. That's right. That's Great. never happened. 
I what don't that think do it's ever it? happened. You know, unfortunately, I, I've been, I know that we all know that Saddam Hussein has said he watched CNN. I've been thinking quite a bit about that, and I've concluded he didn't watch CNN enough. If he'd watched CNN more before he made this decision, he might have made a different decision and withdrawn his troops from Kuwait, you know. We'll be right back with Gene Kirkpatrick, Charles Jaco, Gary Stryker, Wolf Blitzer, and your phone calls. This is a special Saturday night edition of Larry King Live. Don't go away. The liberation of Kuwait has begun. Nobody's We're got it. CNN has been told that CNN has become a primary source of news. Listen to the CNN reporters who are watching it. Charles Jaco, CNN reporter. From Baghdad, John Holloman will be here if you need it. I watch CNN. That's the world's intelligence service. The unique role CNN is playing. Watching CNN mesmerized. The best reporting CNN. that I've seen on uh, what transpired in Baghdad was on CNN. Now, more than ever, stay with CNN, the world's news leader. You know what, Raleigh? Coach says if I work on my fundamentals, maybe in 10 years, I can have a shot at the bigs. I guess if you're coming with me, Raleigh, you gotta work on fundamentals too. Alpo, all the meat dogs love, fortified with all the vitamins and minerals they need to eat well and be well, well into the future. Coach says I can really go places, but I'm not going anywhere without you, Raleigh. Eggnog, mashed potatoes and gravy, Santa cookies, Aunt Wilma's bunt cake. The average American turkey can gain four to seven pounds during the holidays, canes, and you're probably one of them. Sweet potatoes. So include the Kellogg's Special K breakfast in your New Year's diet. Dip. And get the scale moving nuts, in the right direction. Fruit cake, fruit cake, fruit cake. Kellogg's Special K. Lose the holiday fat. Tonight on TBS, join Steve Gutenberg and China Beach's Dana Delaney as they host the 48th Annual Golden Globe Awards, live from Los Angeles. All your favorite motion picture and television stars will be on hand to see who will win one of the most prestigious awards in the land. Plus, enjoy a special tribute to Jack Lemmon as he receives the coveted Cecil B. DeMille Award, the 48th Annual Golden Globe Awards. Tonight at 10 Eastern Live and exclusively on TBS. We're going to go to your phone calls for our correspondents and our distinguished guests. One quick question of, of uh, Gene, though. An Iraqi uh, diplomat was apparently called to the State Department today. What do you make of that? I understand that the reason was to uh, give him a note about, the about prisoners, prisoners of war, and our intention to live by the rules of the Geneva Convention, our expectation that they will, and to give them some information about a medical ship. Do you gather they will? You know, I hope they will. They probably will, I think. Corpus Christi, Texas, Gene Kirkpatrick, Charles Jaco, Gary Stryker, Wolf Blitzer. Hello. Oh, hi there. I'd like to speak with Mr. Jaco, please. He can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'd like to ask him if he thinks it's possible that Saddam Hussein could be waiting for our ground assault before using the chemical weapons that uh, they say he has on hand. Charles? Um... Are we sure our caller doesn't work for military intelligence? That's uh, what a lot of military people here are believing, simply because the best way to deliver chemical weapons is not by missile warhead. In fact, quite a few experts doubt he can even do that. It's to deliver it by artillery shell or by plane, and that is the fear of a lot of people here, that he is indeed waiting for a ground assault, and then we'll try to pepper the uh, U.S. and multinational ground forces with artillery fire and uh, chemicals sprayed from planes. And parenthetically, I might say the main thing they're worried about is not casualties. They are concerned about those. They feel with the chemical suits they'd be fairly well protected, but the fact that when you've got those chemical suits on, infantry action is slowed to an absolute crawl, and the men won't be able to do any fighting with those suits on. I notice, Gene, you're nodding your head. You agree with everything? Yes, I'm, I'm sure that's absolutely right. I know that to be the case, too. Do you expect chemicals to be introduced? The horror well, of horror? everyone has expected them to be, since Saddam Hussein has used them in the Iran-Iraq war against Iran and also against his own and people. And prior Kurds. behavior is a good... Right. Thing. Prior behavior is the best indication we have what he's likely to do now. Anaheim, California. This is Larry King Live's special Saturday night edition. Hello. Hello, Larry. Nice to see you tonight and Thank you. watch you and listen to you. This Please question is addressed to Wolf Blitzer and has to do with the bomb damage assessments. Do we know more than we're releasing or... Uh, are we curtailing these assessments uh, for security reasons? 
The answer is that the uh, United States is not releasing the bomb damage assessments that they've collected so far, in part because of the security consideration. They're afraid that if they tip off too much of what they know, this could help Iraqi intelligence. Gene, is, is, is anything diplomatically possible here? For example, ceasefire. Well, can someone call a ceasefire? Can groups come together? Or are we at an impasse? Nobody's going to call a ceasefire now. I'm, I just feel sure. Because when we're no not in these call. things, that's the first thing we're asking right. for. Well, you right? know. When we're not in squabbles, we're the first day but of we are, Iraq, But we, we are, ceasefire. you know, but we are. And 28 nations are on our side. And we've gone to a lot of trouble to have all those forces present and all the material, the weapons we need. And I think that we want to complete phase one of this operation, at least and really break Saddam Hussein's offensive capacity before there's a ceasefire. Oh. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, does someone want to say something? Yeah, okay. I was... Okay. Number 408. Okay, Santa Fe, go ahead. Pentagon yeah, I was... Mrs. Dutch has see. an emergency. Are you willing to hang up? Yeah. Okay, I... There were 11 of them. With Are you willing to hang up? I'm interested to see if the B-1 okay. bomber is being used. Are you willing to hang up? Operator, uh, well, hold on one second, operator. We'll get an emergency call through, but the caller's in now, and this is a live television show. Go ahead, Santa Fe, quickly. Mrs. Dutch has an emergency. Do I don't, you know I that don't, person? They do not. Okay, I, go ahead, caller. Yeah, I'm interested in all the assets being used. Um, have they used the B-1 bomber? Have we used, Charles, have we? Uh, not that we've heard of. We've heard that the B-52 bombers have been used from Diego Garcia from uh, somewhere in the Middle East and possibly from Turkey. Uh, we've heard that the F-117 stealth fighter has been used, but we haven't heard a thing about the B-1 bomber being used. I could uh, kind of toss that off to my colleague Wolf Blitzer at the Pentagon. Wolf, have you heard anything at all about the B-1 being used in this theater? Because frankly, I have not. Well, Charles, here at the Pentagon, they tell us the B-1 is not being used uh, for two reasons. One, no need. Two, the B-1 has actually been grounded technically because of engine problems uh, over the past several months. But there's no B-1s being used. What have the Israelis said to you, Gary, about the, uh, the Patriot? Well, the Israeli government um, has refused to confirm or deny uh, a wire report that um, made the circuit earlier today which was attributed to uh, a high U.S. government official that, um, uh, the, uh, that the Israeli uh, government has um, agreed not to uh, retaliate for the, for the missile attacks that Saddam Hussein has already carried out. Um, there is a feeling among uh, many people uh, in the, diplom in the, in the uh, journalistic community here that possibly the delivery of the Patriot anti-missile missiles may have something to do with the uh, forbearance by the Israeli government. Yeah, Gene mentioned that earlier. Action. Have they discussed the Patriot missile with you at all? They have not uh, discussed it, no. no. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the, the use, uh, the, the de deployment, the preparation of it is all subject to uh, censorship. Uh, Israel censorship is correct here? Gene? Right, I think so. Oh, Nothing. absolutely. Uh, also correct in saying, uh, not discussing retaliation at all? I mean, is that... Well, Israel has always taken the position that any country who attacked Israel would suffer for it. But and not, they don't say when. But they don't say when, and they don't say how, and I think that's all they're going to say now. And that's correct. Sure it is. Indianapolis, hello. Uh, yes, sir. Good evening. My question is either for uh, Wolf Blitzer or Charles Jaco. Uh, I've heard conflicting reports concerning our American aviators. Some say they're missing in action. Some say uh, there's confirmation of, on one, I think the aviator in Jacksonville, confirmation of, of being fatally wounded. And I was wondering if they have any information they might be able to share with us that might clarify that up for us. Wolf? The uh, aviator from Jacksonville, uh, Michael Stryker, he's the only one that has been confirmed a fatality. Defense Secretary Cheney spoke about him. The others are all listed as missing. Uh, this is a very sensitive subject because if the plane goes down, as a matter of doctrine, of course, uh, U.S. search and rescue teams attempt to try to f see if they can rescue someone. But for the time being, the only uh, confirmed death is uh, Michael Stryker. But we know that other planes have been downed. We know, for example, that the F-4G Wild Weasel, which is this reconnaissance plane, that went down because of mechanical problems in Saudi Arabia, and the two crew members, as Charles Jaco reported, uh, were rescued and brought back to their bases. Colorado Springs, hello. Yes, sir. I love your show, and I want to call and say thank you for all our troops, and I wish more people would stand up for them. 
We need it desperately. We can't let these guys know that we have people against them because if they can with, willing to with, risk their life, then we should be willing to support them. Gene, what do you think about the protesters? There were some big marches today in this country. Yeah, well, I, th uh, <laughs> I think they represent a very small minority of Americans, and I think they're wrong, frankly. And, you know, I think they mis-ill-conceived the situation. But I also think that we've got the, as Americans, everybody's got the right to peacefully express their opinion, including through protests, when, even when they're wrong. When, and that's what when they were we doing. criticize them and saying they, they harm right. us, they harm morale, the right. other side sees them and gets the, or reads the wrong impression, right. is that correct? Well, I think Saddam Hussein has read the wrong impression about many aspects of American life. I think he thinks that we're weak, that we're soft, that we can't take hard fighting or casualties, and I'm sure that that uh, he'll think that the demonstrations mean that we're too divided, in fact, to conduct a war, that we're just on the verge of collapse. But we really finally can't either govern our country or our lives for Saddam Hussein's benefit. You can't go around living for we what he thinks. We just can't live huh? for what he's going to think. You know? We'll be right back with Charles Jaco, Gary Stryker, Wolf Blitzer, and Gene Kirkpatrick. We'll have a news update coming for you. And again, the Iraqi ambassador who was to be our guest tonight was uh, denied that right by his government. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hello, I'm Catherine Cryer at the CNN Center in Atlanta with a look at the major developments in the war in the Gulf. The Allied forces against Iraq capture their first prisoners of war. Twelve Iraqi POWs are in the custody of the U.S. military. They were captured as they directed anti-aircraft missile fire from an offshore oil rig. The Allies raided nine such anti-aircraft batteries in the northern Persian Gulf last night. The 12 POWs will eventually be taken to a prisoner of war camp. A U.S. Marine general says those camps will be overseen by Saudi officials. The Allied air bombardments on Iraq and occupied Kuwait continue to be fast and furious. CNN's Dave Michaels has more on the Allied air campaign and the effort to protect Israel from yet another Iraqi Scud missile attack. After two consecutive days of missile attacks against Israel, the United States sent new Patriot anti-missile batteries to Israel. Defense Secretary Cheney says U.S. soldiers are running the missiles until Israelis are trained. Their training's not yet complete. So as an interim step, we are deploying additional patriots out of Europe that will be manned by U.S. personnel. Israel has not yet responded to the Iraqi missile attack. Kuwait's ambassador to the United States asks Israel not to respond to the missile attack, but concedes Israel has a right to fight back. Even if they do, I have no doubt whatsoever that the coalition will remain intact as strong as ever. Pentagon briefers confirm a shift in coalition yes. targets, with more emphasis now on hitting the Republican Guard. We'll, we'll try to hammer them uh, just as hard as we can. The, uh, the campaign is orchestrated. Uh, the first objective represented certain things, command and control, air defense, air superiority. We're beginning to achieve some of that. So as the chairman said on TV, we can begin to... Uh, shift the focus of the uh, air campaign somewhat. But the general concedes it's hard to tell how much damage has been done so far to Iraqi defenses. We've had difficulty with the bomb damage assessment, we call that BDA. Because of the weather over there, we're, we're trying to get more information in all the time, but the, the fact of the matter is that their air defense system is no longer successful. More video from attacking coalition planes, this time from a French bomber hitting what is said to be an ammo dump in Kuwait. These pool pictures show U.S. Marines in Saudi Arabia. Pool reporters with U.S. troops near the Kuwaiti border report the first skirmishes with Iraqi soldiers, but the fighting was said to be minor. Dave Michaels, CNN, reporting. 
The Pentagon says two U.S. pilots are safe after their F-4G wild weasel went down with mechanical problems. The two ejected and landed on Saudi soil. The United States has lost five other planes to the hostilities in the Gulf. That brings the total of downed U.S. planes to six. Nine U.S. flyers are missing in action. The Allies list four lost planes, two British tornado fighter bombers with four British airmen are missing. Kuwait is missing an A-4 jet and one pilot. Italy reports one tornado fighter bomber and two crewmen as missing in action. An Iraqi diplomat was summoned to the State Department today for the first time since the Gulf conflict began. The Iraqi charge d'affaires was given a statement reminding Iraq of the Geneva Convention's accords concerning treatment of prisoners of war. The statement notified Iraq that the coalition forces in the Persian Gulf had captured 12 Iraqi prisoners and assured that the prisoners would be treated humanely. It is not known if any Americans have been taken captive by Iraq. Protests for and against the war continued in several cities today. About 15,000 peace protesters gathered outside the White House. The demonstrators burned the American flag and listened to speeches. Support our troops! Where are we here? Support our troops! A vocal crowd supporting U.S. troops in Operation Desert Storm marched in downtown Norfolk, Virginia. They wore American flags on their clothing and waved flags at passing cars. And in London, more than 5,000 anti-war protesters marched from Hyde Park, chanting and carrying signs. We'll have more news at the top of the hour. Now back to Larry King Live. Thanks, Catherine. This is a Saturday night special edition of Larry King Live. We're going to do a Sunday night special edition tomorrow night with Congressman Stephen Solars of uh, New York, a strong supporter of the president, and Colonel David Hackworth, the most decorated living American hero, will be in Saudi Arabia, and he's one of the foremost critics of this operation. Our guests are Charles Jaco. He is our correspondent in Saudi Arabia, and Gary Stryker in Jerusalem. At the Pentagon, Wolf Blitzer, and here at our studios, Gene Kirkpatrick of Georgetown University and the American Enterprise Institute. Ms. Kirkpatrick is the former United States Ambassador to the United Nations. We go to Ponca City, Oklahoma. Hello. Yes, Larry, I'm sorry. I have a three-part question. Has Jer I have a first cousin that lives in Jerusalem with her family. I want to know if Jerusalem has been attacked by Scud mess Missile. If Hussein has a chemical warhead, why doesn't he use it? And does Israel have a nuclear bomb? Okay, Gary, Jerusalem, no trouble in Jerusalem, right? No trouble in Jerusalem, but we have uh, had an air raid siren alert here because they go off all over Israel when the missile uh, uh, alert goes up. Uh, we had a false alarm uh, earlier tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, there haven't been any um, missiles, of course, uh, landing in the Jerusalem area, but no one knows what could happen. If he has the warhead, uh, Ms. Kirkpatrick, why isn't he using it? Nobody knows, except that maybe he doesn't really have the capacity to deliver it by missile. Maybe he's holding those chemical weapons for ground combat. And it is generally assumed that Israel has nuclear weaponry. I think it is generally assumed, and I believe that to be the case. You do believe it to be I the case? I do believe it to be the case. You don't know it, but believe it. Right. Uh, Washington, D.C., hello. Yes. Iran. Yes. Um, then my question is for Mr. Jaco. As a Marine myself, I have a lot of friends over in Saudi, and I was wondering, uh, with you being in and about around the Marines, is the, is the morale really that good? I hear a lot from the Pentagon and stuff. Is the morale really good, or is it just uh, to make us here in the States feel a little bit better about them? Well, um, you know how jarheads are. They're pretty plain-spoken people, and uh, the Marines uh, we've spoken to and have heard from generally seem to have um, high morale, but as part of that plain speaking, about, uh, I think it was two, three days ago, some Marines up near the front were interviewed and they were absolutely livid because they said they'd been sent over here without enough spare parts. For example, uh, one of the examples they used is their, uh, one of their tractors kept breaking down. The battery went on out, out on it. They didn't have any spare batteries. They had to go into the local Saudi town and buy a normal automobile battery for $400 cash. Uh, they were short on cash, so they were out of, um, 
out of batteries. Uh, other than uh, foul-ups like that and snafus will happen in an operation this size, and you must know that, uh, the morale seems to be uh, reasonably high. The, the big sticking point of morale is, frankly, a lot of these guys are sick and tired of sleeping out in the desert where it's below freezing at night. It was raining here a few days ago, turning the, the dust out there into thick, oozing mud, and a lot of them just want to get it over with and get back home. How soon that will happen is anybody's guess. A quick question for Wolf and uh, Miss Kirkpatrick. Wolf, how does the Pentagon like all of this? How does the Pentagon deal with uh, CNN and this continuous coverage and uh, briefings that are televised? Are they handling it well? Do they like it? Do they dislike it? I, I think they're handling it very well, and I think they like it a lot. <clears throat> I think the Pentagon has, in my opinion, probably the best press or news media relationship amongst any of the major institutions in Washington. I've covered Congress, the White House, the State Department, all sorts of other places. I've never seen such an efficient, well-organized uh, news media operation as they have here. And the Pentagon's chief spokesman, Pete Williams, is himself a former television news person, and he knows the mm -hmm. needs of the news media. He's working with us, and uh, uh, the, the message that he sends down to the rest of the team here is a very favorable message, and I think there's a pretty good relationship. Sure, there are problems. There's a certain adversarial relationship, but it's a pretty good one. Gene? I think our, I think our Pentagon uh, and our forces take very seriously the business of being the army of a democracy. And they, they understand. They do. They really do. I, I, you know, I, I know Dick Cheney and Colin Powell and our other secretaries well, actually, and, and, and a good many of our top military officers. And they know that uh, they're answerable to the people. They want to keep the people informed. They know that, um, you know that that they're part of a democratic action. Would you have liked this at the UN mission? Say every half hour you, you oh, come sure. out well, and talk to us? The, we had this at the UN mission. Except actually. it wasn't telecast worldwide. It, and people well, a lot of it was telecast. It wasn't telecast worldwide, but a lot of it was telecast in a lot of different places in the world. And we were very responsive. And, and I think most of the people there understood that part of our job was to keep people informed about what we were doing. Of course, Why? it's not over till it's over, but can That's we right. say that Colin Powell has become a major, dramatic military figure of the latter part of this century? Colin Powell is a first-class general and a first-class human being. I, you know, I, I like him a lot and respect him a lot, and I think he's wonderful, and I think a lot of Americans think so, too. I was talking to my brother in Columbus, Ohio, tonight, and he was saying, you know, Dick Cheney and Colin Powell are really great guys, aren't they? President All Reagan America, said on this saying, program yeah. two weeks ago that one of the proudest things he ever did was to put the general's bars on Colin Powell. Well, he did a, he did a good day's work when he did that, too, didn't he? We'll be right back with Charles Jaco, Gary Stryker, Will Flitzer, Gene Kirkpatrick, and more of your phone calls. This is a Saturday night special edition of Larry King Live. We're going to do it again tomorrow night. Don't go away. <laughs> Stryker in Jerusalem, Wolf Flitzer at the Pentagon, and here at our studios, Gene Kirkpatrick, Fairfax, Virginia. Hello. Yes, I understand that uh, during many of the bombing runs on Baghdad, that in addition to bombs, there was also uh, propaganda CIA literature dropped as well. Is this true? And if so, what did this literature say? Charles? Well, we've heard those uh, stories, but we have absolutely no confirmation of them. We'd heard that uh, some sort of leaflets and literature might be dropped in Kuwait, but we have no confirmation of that either. Uh, it's a nice story, uh, especially for the CIA, if it's true, but we have no way of confirming that at all. Well, what do they say at the Pentagon? Uh, they confirm it here that, uh, not officially, of course, but on a lot of those bombing runs, they're not only dropping bombs, but they're dropping these pamphlets, literature in Arabic, trying to explain what's going on, certainly trying to pin all of the blame for this uh, horrendous bombing right on Saddam Hussein. So it's part of the psychological operation. It's part of the psychological campaign to uh, help the U.S. and its allies. Everyone says, Gene, that bombing in and of itself can't win a war. It, it, it can't work. Content. You have to do other things. True? Or is this well, different? Uh, not everyone says that. Most A people. lot of people say it, and most of our military leaders say it. Um, I think that some people hope that bombing in itself can break the will and the morale uh, well, and control the, the air. You it know, did, it brought right, England so. together when Germany did it to England, didn't it? Nightly bombings brought the English people together. Oh, I don't know. You know, I mean, the English people were together. 
And the English people felt that they were fighting a great fight for a great cause, and they had great leadership in Winston Churchill. You don't think the Iraqi people... And I don't think the Iraqi people, frankly, have any of that today. None of it. That's None of it. So Least of all, great leadership. Yeah. Uh, Gainesville, Georgia. Hello. Larry King, you do a fine job. We certainly have enjoyed your coverage. And Thank I wanted you. to ask the uh, guys over overseas when they ever get any sleep, Charles and Richard and all those folks. Okay, Richard, I, th I gather, Gary, Richard is sleeping now, is he? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a long day. We came in from Cairo uh, this morning, and uh, I think we've been up about 30 hours right now, and uh, we're, we're running on, on shifts here so that there's someone at the Bureau all the time, and it, uh, it takes its toll. Charles, how many hours are you sleeping a day? Well, I was really lazy last night or this morning or whenever it was. I got about four and a half, five hours sleep, which I think was as much as I've gotten in about uh, four days. And that's frankly what everyone at the CNN Bureau here is running on, because after you get off, uh, the adrenaline is pumped. You can't get to sleep. When you fall over, you fall over like a big tree hitting the ground. And then you wake up after about five hours and think, well, I'm not going back to sleep. I might as well go to work. Wolf, you could be born, live your whole life and die in the Pentagon and have every need met. Are you, are you staying there? Staying here for the time being, I've been getting uh, about five, six hours a night. Seems to be pretty good. Uh, Ms. Kirkpatrick, I, uh, uh, by the way, do they keep you informed on this? Are you now just a former... Oh, I'm uh, a former UN ambassador. Period. Right. Well, I, I've got, uh, you know, I, I've got a lot of friends in government, and I serve on the Defense Policy Review Board, of, which is advisory to the Secretary of Defense, too. So, I, you know, I have some contacts. Uh, but, of course, all the government leaders have to do is watch us, and they know how you feel. That's right? exactly right. And, he, yeah. CNN and I watch CNN myself, to, in, a, in fact, in order to find out what's going on every place all the time. And everybody I know is watching CNN That's a part all the of this, time. Uh, uh, if I could take a step back from it and ask yeah. it, it is a part of this story. CNN is a part oh, of it. Oh, absolutely. And CNN has done a fantastic job. I think it's done something of a revolution in news coverage, as well as war coverage. And, and everybody that is glued to CNN, really. That's, uh, people walk into their rooms and their houses and turn on CNN. We'll be right back with Gene Kirkpatrick, Charles Jaco, Gary Stryker, and Wolf Blitzer. This is Larry King Live. We will do a Sunday night edition as well with Congressman Steve Solars and Colonel David Hackworth. Don't go away. We love you all. We pray for you all. I just asking um, the Patriot missile. Now, if we feel in Hyattsville, if we were going to hire a military to help us, or if it won the United States, it'd be Israel. I understand they had it for several weeks. Um, I feel like they should be on top of all that. From what we know, maybe we're brainwashed, but I feel like they would know how that thing would work. How come they didn't have that thing ready for this missile? thing that happened, and now all of a sudden we're giving them more and we're sending uh, troops over there. I just don't understand that. Uh, could you all uh, comment on that, Let me ask uh, Gene first. Why do you think? Well, my understanding is, one, that they've only got one system, and two, that, they're, that they've only had it for a couple of weeks, and that they're in the process of trying to deploy it, but it's not enough to provide the kind of protection that they would need. Is this the first time Israel has had soldiers on its soil for it other than its own? So far, I think that's right, Larry. Is that correct, Wolf? Right. Yes, it is, Larry. Let me explain uh, what happened with the Patriot. The Israelis never really pressed for the Patriot until September when the threat from Iraq became obviously a lot uh, greater. And at that time, uh, President uh, Bush agreed to send over some Patriots with uh, teams to try to train the Israelis to learn how to use that older version of the Patriot. With the arrival of the Scuds the other night into Tel Aviv and to Haifa elsewhere in Israel, a decision was made to send over these advanced Patriot missile batteries from Germany. These are, are coming with U.S. experts. It takes a long time to learn to master the Patriot. It's a very complicated, high-tech weapon, and the Israelis, uh, it's going to take time before the Israelis uh, learn how to use it. I have called this a dud scud. This is the... Uh, these, they, haven't, they haven't killed anyone yet, have they? Or is this I the don't think worst they killed expense anyone in military yet. history? Well, There's I been think some everyone, light injuries I in think, Israel. You know, I think everyone's a little surprised that they have not killed anyone yet. I mean, thank God. That's... Uh, I think that the, yeah, we don't know much about the quality of a lot of these weapons that were produced in the Third World and in the Soviet Union, for that matter. We don't even know what, the, I think they're Iraqi Thus far, missiles. they're a failure. They're a failure. I think they're, I think they're Iraqi missiles. 
I think they're Iraqi missile Built. launchers. Maybe Wolf knows about Wolf, that. Do Wolf, you know? do you know? The, the scuds that, uh, that were landed, the 11 that they managed to get off were from these mobile launchers. The hardened fixed site scud launchers were all destroyed, according to Pentagon officials. Uh, but there are still some additional mobile launchers uh, somewhere in Iraq, and the U.S. is anxiously looking for them. Yeah, but are these Iraqi missiles, did the Iraqis produce them themselves, or are they Soviet missiles? What, the originally Soviet-made missiles, the Iraqis improved on the old scuds, the Soviet-made uh, mm -hmm. intermediate-range missiles. They didn't improve enough. They, they didn't did improve them enough. The, the improved versions were called the Al Hussein and the Al Abbas. Let me get a break, and we'll come back with some more. This is Larry King live in Washington. Don't go away. Let's just say... For a transcript of this or any edition of Larry King Live, send $5 to Larry King Live Transcripts. Journal Graphics Incorporated, 267 Broadway, New York, New York, 1007. To order by credit card, call 212-227-READ. Let's go to Hartford, Connecticut. Hello. Hello, I have two quick questions. The first is for Charles. Charles, is mail still getting through to the troops? Are they getting support letters from us? Are getting mail, but the pen yes, they are getting mail, but the Pentagon is now asking people, please, no more cookies, no more care packages, first-class mail only. That's all the APOs, the uh, Armed Forces Post Offices, can deliver right now. Okay, second question, ma'am. Uh, the, the other question is for Wolf. Yep. Um, what kind of precautions are we taking for President Bush right now? He seems to be such a key figure that the coalition could fall apart if something was to happen to him. Well, I'm sure that the Secret Service is protecting him even more thoroughly than they normally do, and they normally protect him very thoroughly. Why, uh, Gene, do you think Iraq did not let their ambassador appear on this show tonight? Would you guess? You're a diplomatic expert. Because they can't control what he says. They probably can't even brief him on a secure basis, but they, they can't control what he says, so they don't want him saying anything. They'd rather have him say nothing than some unpredictable thing, undesirable from the government's point of Gary, view. Gary, there are lots of fears all day today about Israel being uh, struck. It, it, uh, you're approaching morning. Or, uh, what are they saying there now? Are, there, are they still uh, kind of on edge, or is it relaxed? Well, they're counting on, uh, of course, passing the night without any missile attacks, but um, yesterday, you recall, was after dawn when... The three missiles did yeah. hit uh, Tel Aviv. Much so later than that. New Iberia, Louisiana. Hello. You may, you've got Baltimore here. Okay, I'm sorry. I think this is New Iberia. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, is it possible that Saddam Hussein could be hiding in the very same shrines that the government said that they were going not going to uh, target in the, uh, their bombings? Possible. Saddam Hussein could be hiding almost anywhere. He moves around a lot, and we don't know where he is at any given moment. I want to thank you all very much for uh, an hour that went by uh, very quickly. Charles, thank you, and get some more rest. You're welcome, Larry. Gary, <laughs> have a safe day in Jerusalem. Thank you. Wolf, wander the halls. We'll be hearing from you all day, right? Right. <laughs> and uh, Madam Kirkpatrick, I thank you. It's, uh, it's, these are extraordinary times. And it's they're always they're great to have you with Listen, us. It's great uh, to talk to you. Quickly from you, we have 30 seconds of yeah. forecast. How long is this going to last? I think it's going to be a short war. In spite of everything that everybody's saying about two months and three months, I think it's going to be shorter than that. I think it's going to be a matter of weeks. And, um, and we're going to see a pullout from Kuwait? And we're going to see, a, we're going to see either a surrender or a collapse leading to a pullout from Kuwait. Thank you. Welcome. Jean Kirkpatrick, the former ambassador of the UN from Georgetown University, where she teaches. Catherine Cryer and David French will co anchor the news at the top of the hour. We'll see you tomorrow night with a Sunday night edition of Larry King Live with Steve Solars and Colonel David Hackworth. Good night. Majesty, by the way, I am. Uh, I'm sorry, Your Highness. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am located at your studios outside, outdoor studios. All right. Thank you for talking with us. Uh, is there anything? Anytime. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? First of all.
Before yes, we... I would like to say one thing to everyone who is watching this program, that when Saddam Hussein started, started occupying Kuwait, uh, and at the same time attacking Israel, you don't hold your brother and put a knife over the neck of your brother and say to your enemy, or Saddam's enemy as he calls them, uh, as he thinks they are his enemy, and say to him, I will kill your brother if you don't leave. The enemy will say to you, kill your brother regardless what happens. And if Saddam was courageous, courageous enough to attack Israel, why do it after invading Kuwait? All what he's doing just for uh, his own propaganda and for simple-minded people. Uh, there are Palestinians and Jordanians here in, uh, in the eastern province and the Yemenis, and they are enjoying wonderful life. And I've met with a lot of them yesterday and uh, they have no sympathy, none whatsoever, for uh, Hussein, Saddam Hussein cause. All right, then, would you carry that uh, just one step further? What would your feeling and reaction be if Israel responded militarily? Let's say this if Saddam... To, Go ahead. This is up to our uh, politicians to uh, decide, and I think this uh, particular subject has uh, been addressed many times, and a lot of people have uh, given uh, sufficient answers to that. All right, well, I was asking you as, one, as a Saudi politician, sir. Well, a uh, politician here is dif different between politicians in your part of the world. Uh, politicians in our part of the world who deal with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we call them politicians and ambassadors. But as far as we are, as I am concerned, I'm a civilian uh, worker, and uh, I, my main concern and emphasis is the infrastructure of the Eastern Province and uh, the needs for the Eastern Province. Thank you for talking with us. My pleasure. Saudi Prince uh, Fahd bin Salman, the vice governor of Saudi Arabia's eastern province, very much in the heart of what is going on in the Persian Gulf. One of the hazards for ships in the Gulf are mines. Here's what happened when the British ship, the HMS Gloucester, went on alert yesterday.